Hey everybody, Watches Review here with a look at the Play Arts Final Fantasy VII Red 13. And let me say right off the bat, this is probably one of the greatest figures ever made. And honestly, I very rarely am this impressed by a figure. And that is saying a lot, because people know that I'm outright critical of most things. So, I actually unboxed this guy quite a while ago, but if you're curious as to what the box looks like, here it is. Now, his accessory was actually Kate Sith, who I will be reviewing separately, if for no other reason than I've currently misplaced him. It happens, don't scuff. Now, you'll notice that it mentions having over 22 points of articulation, which is probably the understatement of the century, because this figure has an absurd amount of articulation that's probably, I think maybe 40 or 50 points. Maybe not that high, but... It's just an epic amount of things that you can actually do with this. So I don't even know where to begin with this figure. But let me just point out some of the cooler features. Now first off, you'll notice all the joints here with each of the paws. He has a joint here, then another joint that sort of goes into here, so... You can actually, if you do twist it right, get that to pop up a little bit more. She goes down a bit. <clears throat> I'm actually really not sure how best to display it, but it's basically a side-to-side -side ankle pivot. So, or actually paw pivot in this case, so... It's actually like this little ball thing, and then it kind of rotates around that, so... It's a very cool touch. The other really big thing here are the sort of floating shoulders. I mean, you'll have one joint that sort of sticks out and allows one range of motion. Then if you look closer, you'll notice this block thing in here. That block thing can actually go into the figure for when you're pushing the thing up a lot closer, and voila. But it's just absurd how much you can do with this figure, and hell, if you're inclined, you could even get him to stand on his uh, paws here and maybe pat somebody on the back. Get a whole Scooby thing going on there. So yeah, very, very cool. You'll notice that there's a pretty good amount of sculpt detail in terms of fur. And then you have the little tattoos and stuff or whatever painted on. I mean, look at this head sculpt here. Pretty neat. And then we have a little bit of paint variation, then shades of black used to differentiate stuff on the mohawk here. In addition to a, I guess, deeper shades of orange and like sort of a rusty red for portions breaking up that and of course the tail itself which I'm not as fond of because it's sort of a pre-posed or pre-sculpted tail but um it's actually translucent and you can really see that in the tip but then they painted over portions to give it additional color so yeah basically the fact that we have these extra hip joints here means that you can pose him and a lot more, say, attack poses or whatever. Ah, no! Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that in. I'm not gonna bother reshooting a whole segment for that, but you'll also notice that the neck portion here can go up. I mean, you can't get, like, a really good howling pose because it doesn't go up a tremendous amount, but you'll notice that we also have a waist segment here which goes more to the side, but if you push it up a little bit, you can get a little more stuff. So you can kind of get him into a... Actually, it's kind of a crap pose, because it looks like he may be taking a dump instead of howling, but... Yeah, something like that, maybe. And again, he is howling, or would be howling. Let me just quickly run through the articulation before I get too carried away, but we have a mouth that opens and closes. Not a tremendous amount, just because the sculpt. The head will rotate. It's on kind of like a physical ball, so it will go up and down a little bit. It goes out to the side, and then of course we'll rotate a full 360 if this appeals to you for some reason. This uh, neck joint here is just slightly impeded by the mohawk. I mean, you'll notice they actually did make a little cut here, so it can go back a little bit further. 
just sort of a nice touch, but mostly it will go forward a lot. So say if you have a downed character, again, Nightwing is a victim, you know, he could be attacking. You know, if that's a very Red 13 to, to thing to do. And again, you'd really have to kind of adjust the legs to get just the right position. And you really can because there are just so many joints in the legs. Now, back to the actual shoulders. As mentioned, they do rotate a full 360. In addition to being able to pop in and out thanks to this floating segment here. Which, I mean, honestly is a great touch for a uh, quadruped. Now we have a somewhat disappointing single joint uh, elbowish thing here. I mean, I'm slightly less impressed by that. Also, we don't have like anything to rotate there, but you do get a pretty good range of equivalent motion just from the fact it goes out that far, and I can't believe that they'd be able to do it in any way without completely messing up the design of the sculpt and just looking funky anyway so I do forgive that now you'll notice that this actually rotates above the cuff or bangle because those were actually the only armor pieces he could really equip and then in addition to below it it's like a completely separate piece so you could technically also just rotate it like this while holding the actual paw still we have a single joint here at the ankle portion, which connects into this sort of ankle pivot, or paw pivot. Again, very nice touch. It's basically the same range of motion for the back legs, but let me just show you as always, the thing does move back instead of forward because that's how it does on animals. And then we have another segment here to go forward a little bit and then under PC on that, it's basically the same. The only slight difference is that we have a pivot right here for where it rotates as opposed to just having a side pivot like this. I mean, it's a slightly different cut, but it's the same range of motion. The tail does rotate. No, wait. Sorry, it does not rotate. It just has like a cut for, I guess they use the different rubbery plastic for this. And then, as mentioned, the actual torso can move side to side a little bit. In addition to, it feels like it moves up and down a little bit if you twist it. But, yeah, it's just such a really, really awesome figure. And there's a lot you can do with it, but unfortunately, due to the absurd amount of articulation, the all the points you can manipulate, it does occasionally get a little bit tough just trying to get exactly what you want because there's almost too much stuff you can do with it. And it just takes a lot of fiddling to get the exactly right, cool-looking pose. But the cool thing is, you're capable of getting that pose. With a lot of other figures, especially your quadrupeds, you just never get that sort of range of motion. And that just really means the world. Although I would wholeheartedly recommend picking up this figure, I have to admit having a little bit of a bias, just because Red 13 was one of the characters that really attracted me to Final Fantasy VII in the first place, so... You know, just keep that in consideration, but as you can see, there's just so much that this figure offers that... You know, he should be a pretty tempting choice for most collectors. Or aficionados, or whatever. So yeah. Until next time.